All right, today we're looking at the Pro M10 FX, which is a radio frequency detector with a digital display, which is very useful. It was manufactured by a UK based company called JJN, who are responsible for producing many different pieces of kit, ranging from radio frequency analyzers, radio frequency detectors, nonlinear junction detectors. Uh, but more specifically, um, one of my favorite pieces of kit, the WAM108T, which if you've not really seen, I recommend you watch the video that I've already done on that product. Uh, it's one of my favorite, it's very versatile uh, as a radio frequency detector. It can also be in certain circumstances used as a radio frequency analyzer if used correctly as well. But this product here, it, like I said, is a radio frequency detector that has the ability to detect radio frequencies ranging from one to 10,000 megahertz or 10 gigahertz. It's a handheld device, as you can see, to give you some idea of the size, that's my hand. Obviously very well designed, simple but effective design, handheld. Comes with two antenna, long whip antenna, and a medium size and whip antenna. It's, uh, we call them the whip antennas because, as you can see, although discourage of you from doing that, um, they, you know, that's why they're called whip antennas, basically. Comes with a majority of the case actually taken up, not necessarily by the size of the uh, main, body unit itself, but actually by the adapters. So it can be used anywhere in the world. Uh, obviously has adapters to the UK, uh, Europe, and North America, the plug itself. And it comes with a set of headphones, which I'm gonna discuss in more detail later on. So to give you some more background on this device, it's actually what one might refer to as a legacy device. It's on JJN's website, but on their archive page. So it's not one that they currently promote, although all the details and all the specifications are on there. This was actually sent to me uh, quite recently and it's been forwarded on to one of, our, one of our overseas teams. But before it shipped out, I thought I'd do a quick video on it because it is a great device. Despite the fact that it's a little bit older, it works very effectively and I just thought it would be useful to give you not an unboxing, but a demonstration as to how it works. So the reason I actually brought out the fact that it's a little bit older is because at the time, one of its key features, or one of its key features still is, but one of the, the reason it was uh, significant back when it was, when it first came out was the fact that it would separate signals that were coming from a GSM or 3G device. In other words, um, when 3G first came about, this device sort of came out at the same time, I, I guess, and its significance was that the frequencies were differentiated on the actual unit itself and I'm going to demonstrate exactly what I mean by that in a moment but just to say that like the WAM108T it separates all the different types of cellular signals this one does that but this one does it in less detail because this was pre 4G and 5G. It also has a feature that they call the peak pulse detector and according to the manual it enables the device to detect signals from devices that only transmit momentarily and to indicate that a signal has been detected so in other words it's designed to pick up pulse devices and these devices are, are varied in in terms of what it is that they do for example some listening devices will re uh, record the data and send the data out in bursts so that it's only momentarily that the, it emits a signal uh, vehicle, some vehicle trackers do the same. They capture the data, they essentially record the data onto the device and then send it in like a burst, which in some cases takes a couple of seconds, but in more uh, versatile and advanced devices, it takes, you know, milliseconds. And the reason that that's an attractive option in terms of the design of a product of that nature is because it's less detect detectable from devices like this, yet this one actually has that feature built into it, which is good. So on the top of the device, we have the main control knob itself, which I mentioned just a moment ago, which is also the on and off switch. We have the 3.5 millimeter jack for the headphones. Again, we'll go through why that's important in a moment. We also have the antenna ports as well. Um, again, with all of their devices, there being JJN, indicates which antenna goes where, which is very helpful to avoid any ambiguity uh, so the long whip antenna will go in there and easy to control to turn it on of course you just turn it clockwise as you would expect and it powers up the device so let's take a look at the functionality of the device so to turn the device on very straightforward as you would expect turn it on via the main switch which is also the control knob for the receiving strength 
So turn it all the way up to the top to start off with is the manufacturer's recommendations. Once that's done, you want to determine what mode you want it in. In this case, we have it in both modes, which is, or, or the mode for, for both, should I say, it's the wideband and the cellular signal uh, being received at the moment. Okay, so as you can see, it's showing us there what that is. That's measured in megahertz, so just be conscious of that. What's going on here as well, you'll see, one, if this ever starts flashing, it will, it will start flashing if there's a suspicious signal. I'm going to turn the beep uh, on now as well, just to show you how that is. All right, as you see here, it's, the it's decided that it's received a suspicious signal and it is showing us now that there's a 3G signal coming in as well. My mobile phone is on, so that's no surprise. Uh, so that's acting really as an alarm but it's also showing that we received, we had a signal from the 900 megahertz range as well, or the bandwidth, okay? So again, this is the detect slash reset button. So in essence, if we wanna reset that, in fact, before I do that, I'm going to turn my phone on airplane mode. So I'm going to isolate my mobile phone uh, from sending a signal, or prevent it from sending a signal. I'm also going to turn the receiving strength down. So the knob is around halfway now. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's around halfway. And I'm going to hit the reset button. All right. And the beeping that you can hear is every time it receives a signal, it's going to tell us by way of beeping. If we had the vibration mode on as well, it would vibrate. But in the video, it just makes a horrible sound. So we're going to leave that. What I'm going to do now is press the mode button to isolate the types of signals that it's receiving and that in this case is going to be the wideband range. Then I'm going to press it again and it's going to switch to cellular only. Okay, and the reason that you might do this and it says it in the guidelines set up by the manufacturer is that if you're in an environment where you suspect only devices that would emit a cellular signal, or in this case, more specific, in this case, sorry, more specifically, a 3G signal, then you would want this mode to be on. But again, because this device is slightly old, you might want to consider having it on wideband because most devices now may emit, or well, not most devices, but some devices most certainly do emit a 4G and soon a 5G signal as well. And although it isn't on this device, it is in the wideband range. It does fall within the bandwidth that the device is designed to detect as it says on the on, on below the, the monitor there. So I'm gonna switch it back to do both. But I think actually just a bit of a side note, with regards to the 3G, 4G, 5G, 2G issue, um, I think a lot of people make the mistake in that uh, rendering these devices obsolete because it doesn't detect or it, they, they don't think it detects 3, uh, 4G, 2G, 5G, or they basically uh, work on the understanding that because it doesn't say it, it doesn't detect it. That's definitely not the case. These devices still detect all radio frequencies within the bandwidth that it mentions. And interestingly, as you, you may already be aware, but 3G, 4G, and 5G, and I think probably 6G whenever that comes out, will still fall within uh, or below the 10,000 bandwidth. In other words, this device is not obsolete if you're trying to detect a 5G signal because 5G still operates within this bandwidth, which is 1 to 10,000 megahertz. So, okay, it doesn't tell us that it's a 5G signal or a 3G or a 4G signal, or it tells us a 3G, but not a 4G or a 5G signal, but it still tells us that it's detecting a, a, a signal within a certain bandwidth and it's actually telling us what that bandwidth is we just need a separate piece of paper to remind us what the bandwidth is if you don't have a great memory so obsolete absolutely not i completely disagree that that's the case is it a little bit more laborious on the operative's part yes yeah, slightly but still it's not the end of the world so i'm just going to turn the beeping off there um, and what i'm going to do i'm going to turn my mobile phone signal back on in fact i will turn the beep on as well just to show you how it's going to work and uh, let me just do that now so i'm going to turn airplane mode off and Wi-Fi off, so it should use a 3G signal. Uh, it's probably using, a, it is actually, so unfortunately my phone is actually using a 4G signal, so it's showing here, if I put my phone closer to it, you can see that there, and I've turned it right down. Actually, now it's picked up a 3G signal, as you can see, and it's telling us, look, there's a problem, it's picked something up that's suspicious, uh, and it's within, as you can see, that, 
uh, bandwidth or the 900 megahertz range there so overall this device is very very good what i'm unsure of at this point and if i do become aware of it in the near future i will put it up on this video once it's been posted um but i'm just going to turn the beeping off now um it, it's good because as the variable uh range selection it's um more of a analog control rather than a digital one which to be honest i think i prefer um i don't what i don't know is though the the sort of uh, diameter or the radius in which it can detect. So when it's on maximum, you would like to think it's something like 50 meters or, or so. I think it probably is. If I had to guess, I would suggest it's, um, that its range is up to 50 meters, but I'm not entirely sure. It's useful because you can, you know, set it to a certain setting. If the battery's charged or if it's, you know, if it's not low, you set it to around halfway, you could probably rely on it uh, being able to detect in a residential area what at least one property so if for example you're in a certain room you might want to dial it, dial it down to around a quarter so if that's off and that's halfway and that's all the way then i would suggest setting it to somewhere like a quarter if you're trying to search a just a single room in a standard residential property i would probably cautiously suggest that that quarter is around somewhere between five to ten meters uh, radius detection from the point that this is in so for example from this from this unit uh, here you set it to quarter it will search outwards and around five to ten meters and that would fit most rooms in a residential property if it's slightly bigger then of course you can dial it up if you're not sure then what you can always do is once you isolate all of uh, the uh, signal emitting devices within the property then it might be a wise idea to do a proximity test with the device in other words you set it to the setting that you think is suitable you turn all the devices within the property off you go to the other side of the room you have your colleague turn the mobile phone on using a you know a cellular signal a cellular network and if it doesn't detect it then whilst you're making a phone call have your colleague dial it up slowly turn the dial slowly 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 till it does detect it and then once that's been detected you know that that's that's the range at that point each of each product i think will be slightly different even each of these units probably will vary slightly and so it's wiser to do the proximity test every time you use the device so going back to the headphones, the reason that they are there and they are so significant is because they actually allow the user to listen to any demodulation that takes place. So just very, very briefly, demodulation is in essence a process that converts a radio frequency signal that is carrying an audio packet it demodulates it, unpacks it essentially, so that you can, in essence, hear it through the device. Now, some devices have a speaker built in so you can hear it through that. This speaker does not. It can only be heard through the headphones. So if there are malicious signals being picked up, it is well worth plugging in the headphones and listening to what's going on. And if you do hear anything suspicious, you might want to either whistle or if you are having a conversation or if anyone else is talking in the room, then it will pick that up. It will literally play back to you in real time what it is that's being said in the room. So it should make it a lot easier for you to locate exactly where that device is. Overall, a very good device. Um, people, again, just to go back to what I said earlier about it being outdated, not the case, I don't believe. Yes, it doesn't show you what the type of frequency is, but... It does give you the ability to detect all types of device, all types of devices, whether it's uh, 3G, 4G, 5G. You just have to be aware of what frequencies or what bandwidths they operate on in order for you to identify what type of frequency it is. Very robust, as with all JJN's products, comes with the of what I think is aluminium casing, uh, and that is encased in a Pelican style laser cut foam case very very robust very safe very strong great product outdated in my opinion no useful very much so thanks for watching speak to you soon